Welcome to Average Superstar TV. I am your host, Lauren Lepre. Please give us a like, subscribe, and feel free to comment. And this week, I am very excited to announce we have got Chloe Carroll joining us, an indie filmmaker. She has uh, been quite busy. She's been in a sea of short films, also has her feature, The Honeymoon Phase, and she also has her own YouTube channel where you can watch tons of horror movies called Fair Crypt. Fair Crypt, yes, yes. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to have you on. Chloe, how you been? I'm be I'm, I've been good. It's uh, it's really nice and sunny here in LA, um, although I do miss Philly, uh, but I love being out here, but I'm still bi-coastal. We, we go back a lot, so. That's great. And uh, I may have brought this up to you before we went live, but it's 34 degrees here and very windy in Philadelphia. So uh, be happy where you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be hanging out with you guys and having some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's jump into it right here. So what is your origin to even getting into acting? So I studied performing arts in England, and then I moved to America when I was 18. Uh, and I met my best friend and now husband, and he introduced me to like the filmmaking part of uh, making movies and stuff. And I got really into it. And then I started uh, producing my own short films and... Um, it all started from there, and now I have a YouTube channel called Fair Crypt, and I have a bunch of the short films that I've produced, all horror. And um, I also started last year um, accepting submissions for other people's short films. So, you know, those people who, like, have just got out of festivals or even if they've got their film on their channels but they're looking for a little bit more promotion, um, then I started putting them on Fair Crypt and making it more like a, a horror hub for short films, which... It's just a really cool thing for me because I am totally the audience that um, watches those. So it's cool to have my own company where I can do that also. Yeah, I mean, I hear it talked about all the time and people are like, I need things to watch. They recommend everyone's like Shudder and Fear Crypt and, you know, they, they, they name all the others. But like you're, you're right there. You're doing you're, you're knocking it out. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So so you're you got here when you were 18 and uh, like. So you've been doing this about how many years now total between acting straight through? Well, I would say I, I like delved into acting like properly. Like I did some acting stuff like while I was studying in England, but like all my main stuff was in America. Um, so yeah, like nine years now. Wow. Look at you. Awesome. Awesome. Sweet. So after all the short films that you, you, you got, you had rolling here, you got the what the you had the idea. I know that was uh, your husband Phil's. I wrote the script for the honeymoon phase, and exactly like how did you get that funded? I'm just out of curious. I always ask filmmakers that. Yeah, so that's actually the most important question. And um, we so we um, were talking with um, a distant member of Phil's family who funded our film Full Equity. So you know, there's all this it's just if you know someone who can help you out that's the best way to do it as a filmmaker because it's like the catch 21 where like you can't people won't trust you with money to do a feature till you've done a feature yep. but you can't get the money from investors till you've done a feature so like you know um kickstarting or raising your own money even just doing a really small low budget feature um then that proves that you can do it and you can handle it and then like it helps you to do your second one like when we moved out to LA and um, me and my husband were taking meetings with people and um, talking with different people and investors and stuff like they the reason why we got most of those meetings and legitimacy was because we already did one um, so the best piece of advice like I I thought that like shorts would be good but like it's it's hard like they want to see that you can do a feature if you want to be a feature filmmaker um but it's always about getting the money like it just sucks like until you get the raising the money is just the hardest part once you've got that then you can like you're all set to go like you can do everything but uh yeah it's tough it's tough for everyone no matter what stage you're in so, especially this time. <laughs> so an actual you you had the golden ticket where an actual family member paid picked up the check yeah not, not nice i mean look, look it's that's really one of the two ways you're either gonna get an investor or, or it's a family member or you're paying out of pocket yeah, yeah it's it was complete look um you know there was there's no secret to it like uh you just it 
it's just hard when you you first start out. So if you know like someone who can help you out, then that's the first to go to. It's hard to get investors that you don't know to just invest in you uh, without knowing you um, or your work, unless you've got some like really cool color shorts to give you a large amount of money. Yeah, it, it's it's the worst part about filming. <laughs> Without a doubt. So how long did it take to shoot? How many days were you shooting this? Uh, we shot for 20 days. Um, I think we wrapped a day early, actually. We did. So 19. Um, so, yeah. Did you go straight through? Uh, no, we had breaks in between. Huh. Uh, oh, 20 days, like just straight through it. Been super well, I didn't know, I didn't know too, because like you're on a restricted budget because you're not a list like myself. So, the reason I asked that is I didn't know how long you had the location, like, like before you fell into have to pay more money, you know. So, yeah, we, we were actually really lucky. The, um, the people that we rented the house from were a British American couple also. And then and that's how we were like, oh, we are too. Like, you know, <laughs> we just kind of like work our magic. And they were so nice. And they let us, we were there for like, I think it was just under a week before we even started shooting. So we could set everything up. The whole, wow. like the casting crew lived in the house that we shot in. So we were like, it's a lot of moving around and stuff. But it was, it was really well. cool. The movie was definitely shot right. I know who your DP was, and I know he's very technical, making sure. So I could see that, right? <laughs> yeah, he's he's super awesome, and um, he's done some like really amazing work. So if you're looking for a DP, Joe Staley is really awesome. Yeah, so I, I could see that he wanted to probably be in there for a full week, just kind of seeing the vision, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he came through because uh, the movie the movie looked very sharp. Thank so, you. Yeah. I watched it again last night to brush up on my notes. So it was uh, free on Tubi. This is the next nightmare because, um, you know, film is just, you've heard the horror stories with distro. And like my film, The Dark Military, we got we got snake bit with the distributor nightmare. And, but, and it took me for a long time to get my film back. So the film company you sign with, I mean, are they taking care of you? Yeah, we um, we signed with Dark Sky Films, and they they've been really awesome in helping us advertise the movie and like uh, really gave us a chance as a small film. Um, yeah, I recommend them. They they were great. That's great. Yeah, and I mean, you guys really got a, like a sea of reviews. Uh, and I saw I saw you guys were even made USA Today, and I'm like, that that's freaking awesome. I mean, this is this this awesome. I mean, that was all through your distro company, right? They kind of like had the connections for all that for you, right? Yeah, they did. They did all of it. They were awesome. Also, um, Phil, the director, did a lot of uh, email and people and stuff and like worked really hard to get the movie out there. So it was a team effort, but they did most of the advertising for us, which was really cool because, you know, we we don't have any, we didn't have any connections when we did that movie. Uh, we were just learning as we were going. Um, which is how everyone does it, really. Uh, and nothing, nothing can really prepare you for doing a feature until you do it. Yeah. Um, like, you know, you can do classes and everything, but until you are producing a feature film, just... You, you, you know, it's crazy, too, because, like, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, my film, The Dark Military, came out for you guys, but I had to do, like, basically said what you said Phil just did. Like, I had to just basically write people, and it's kind of have a copy and paste of, like... What do you think of this? You know, here's some still shots. Here's the trailer. Like, here's what it's about. I would love for you to review it. And you just have to keep doing that. And it's like funny because some people like come out with their movies and they're just like, hey, Laura, can I have all your contacts? I'm like, I guess I could send them to. This is like six months of hard work. This is just like a movie review came out. Who is this company? How do you look them up? Get their email. And it, it was work, you know? So like you. Uh, especially an indie director, you're 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 never off the hook. Like no, you just can't, no. you're you're never off the hook. You know, it's it's podcast. I mean, from someone who gets like thousands of millions of hits to the one that's only going to get like a hundred views, you you do that because if you even bring in thirty fans from that one hundred, uh, you know, viewed podcasts, that's three that's thirty more fans that you yet you now have. You know, so. Yeah. A lot of podcasts, a lot of emailing. It is a lot of it is a lot of work. It is with anything you you want to do when you're starting out, like looking up new people. Like even when I, oh my gosh, when I was looking for an agent, the amount of time I like spent on IMDb Pro, and it was the same with like looking for 
movie reviewers and it's just so much time in front of your computer that no one sees they just see the movie um yeah and a lot of podcasts where you talk about the same thing you know but it's like different audiences it's, yeah it's now you have that thing where it's like you're trying not to say the same exact thing in order that they take. you don't want to put them side by side <laughs> people yeah. make a joke out of it and stuff yeah but so how long you now been in LA from when, when did you guys make the move from Philly to LA? Uh, we moved in July last year. So we've been here like a year now. Um, it's gone so fast. I mean, we moved right during COVID. We did the road trip because um, the rent was cheaper. So like we got a good deal um, and we drove here. So it wasn't like we were taking flights, but it, everything was shut down when we got here. And we thought that it was going to start getting better right after we, we got here and it didn't. It was still really bad and everything was closed and you know, we were really excited. Like I was excited to do like all the LA acting classes and like really live the LA actor kind of like, you know, when you're starting out and you do all yeah. the classes and you meet people and, but they were all shut. So it was, it was like super depressing. Um, but it's just started opening up within the last few months, which has been really cool. Um, so it's definitely worth, worth being in LA. I think it's, it's really nice and beautiful here. Yeah. I mean, is there more of a, Wow, you're in the jungle. You're right where it's at. You know, like it's just different what you're used to compared to around here, where you know, you know, we have limit. We have, we have a very short ceiling here in Philly. Yeah, but I I think actually since COVID now, like video chats and stuff have become like so big, and people are like, well, I don't want to fly to LA to take a meeting. So I think it is going to be better too to not be in LA. And I know a lot of people who like live in like Austin and stuff, and they just buy LA for meetings instead of you know paying the LA rent which is outrageous <laughs> um and it's just really expensive to live here and do the same things um as you would do in a different state uh you definitely have to lower your uh your expenditure um because you're paying for other stuff like rent and you know everything's just the dollar tree is your best friend yeah <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it is it is really nice here um so I think it's worth like, you know, I think it's worth it overall, but you don't have to, I don't think. It's totally up to how you wanna, how you wanna play the game, you know? If you wanna be in LA and do it, or if you wanna travel and do more traveling, but pay less uh, to live here, it's personal. Well, yeah, I always just say in the end, it goes by also like when you're off the clock, are you happy where you're at? You know, that's that's always the main thing too, you know, so, but. Well, so you got a uh, you got anything kind of brewing in the works for 2022? I do. So I'm actually um, I'm do I'm shooting a feature film in Philly in March, uh, which I'm really excited about. Um, it's uh, the feature film version. We did uh, a proof of concept short called Alicia uh, right at the start of COVID, right before it came out. Um, and then uh, we did like the festival run. Then during quarantine, I wrote the feature, and then I've had multiple like amazing. Um, writers help me along the way and just do like rewrites and help me out and we just attached attached a director and we're gonna go ahead and film in march which is super exciting um and then uh, my husband is also doing a feature that he's hoping to do this summer also potentially in philly that depends on um a bunch of different things right now um and i'm gonna produce that so yeah we've got some some cool features coming up totally different genres i'm really excited about oh so you're getting out of the horror for for the next round possibly for phil's yes but okay. for mine is a horror movie mine's uh, about vampires. <laughs> so who would you land as director sorry who did you get for the director so our director is Bez Rebecca Fonte. She um, is an amazing director from Austin. So she's going to fly in for it. Um, she's just such a perfect match for the script. Uh, and uh, we're really excited. She's doing her notes on the script now and touching it up. So it's like tells, you know, um, what she wants to explore in the movie. Um, but I'm like super excited she's so awesome right. uh, and then i'm producing with uh britney snayman who does all my shorts this will be her first feature film um yeah really exciting is, it, is that going to be local too in philly that's the one yeah that's we're going to film that in philly for sure um so and and the three of us work together on delicious 
Yes, yes, we did. And that 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 was just so awesome. And that just shows you like how uh how something could take off real quick. Like I've never had that before. And then um uh, we got really lucky because um like a like a really influential TikTok star did a review of Delicious and then <laughs> sent so many people to the YouTube link. And like normally I would get like, you know. 20 and under k views on my shorts and then all of a sudden i got like 8000 subscribers the films up to like not looked recently i think it's like 720000 views all because of all because of this just random tiktok star and also that um the girl in it uh the blonde girl uh looks like a famous tiktok star apparently and i didn't know that and they oh. all think the so like they're all going to watch her and it's not it's not even her. But I'm like, oh hey, that's great for me. Like I, yeah, if they I, ask the question, don't answer it. Just you yeah. didn't get that question. <laughs> <laughs> Never came through. <laughs> so that was just complete luck and it did absolute wonders for my channel. And I was just so blessed and lucky to have that uh, happen. And it was just complete, complete luck. Like I didn't pursue it. It just happened. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. Yeah. You were linking to me to everything. I mean, it, it, that seemed to take off. I got, that got traffic through, you know, that, that, that was, that was a fun day of shooting even. like this Yeah. Shit. No, it was so fun. Everyone was like, wow, like Davey is so good. And I was like, yeah, Lauren's like local to to Philly uh -huh. and I like asked her to do this. Um, it was just, I think it was just perfect. It was just such a fun little shot. Um, that and, and, I, and I loved it even more that I didn't have lines. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> Stand there and be <laughs> creepy. I was like, yeah, I can do this. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We, I was I was just so lucky that you would do that type of role too. I was like, you got there and I was like, can I just wipe these things on your top and like put grease in your hair? And you were just like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yes. Even when uh, the makeup bars was done, I was like, this ain't enough. I remember I went like into the guy's, uh, he was a really cool dude. I forgot his name, but I've been going in, I'm getting mustard. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> like he ain't dirty enough. This guy's got to you know, really be done up more. So yeah, that was, that was fun. And uh, it was funny because that recently played at New Jersey Horror Con. Yeah. And I was up for best actor. You were up for best actress. And I remember uh, when we got done, I'm in there watching it. And I sat up front and I was just, I'm sorry, I sat in the back and everybody was like making noises like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And uh, at the end of the movie, uh, they were, uh, the guy Tony was changing, changing, uh, I don't know, the MP, MP4 out. And there was a little bit of time. So I walked up front <laughs> and I actually walked up front and I turned around and I go, <laughs> Hey, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you do, don't eat at my house. And they're like, oh, it's Davey. Like, yeah, that was pretty funny. That's yeah, so awesome. Oh, I wish we'd have got that on film. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just, for for people who stood up and took a couple of pictures. Yeah, but it, it, it went over. That, that, was a, that was a fun time. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I wish I was there so bad. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so I know we, we jumped into it a couple of I'm oh, sorry. Let's actually back up to... Uh, to, to your feature here. So, I mean, was there anything that really stuck out? Like anything like, um, as far as now that the movie's done that like, that you did that maybe, man, we could have maybe did it so much easier if we did it this way, or do you just kind of think you think you had it down the way it was? Oh, there's a list of things we could have done better. And, um, you know, from literally from the script, uh, right to distribution, there's so much, there's, there was so many like things that we could, we, we could do, but like, you, you don't know, like, you know, it was our first time and you don't understand the game when you, when you first play in the, the film, the feature film game, um, with festivals, with, um, with like who you bring on, you know, from everything. Like the, there's some scenes that we wish we could redo, and and it is never, you know, it's never going to be perfect, no matter what you do. It, no it never perfect. is, but I always try to tell people, like, like if someone has something, like, I'll be like, how well do you know my movie? Like, remember this part? But like, it just dawned on me a month ago how we could have cut that entire day in half and had another half a day back to do other, like, you know, like. Even at the final fight scene of my movie, or anybody knows it, like we had a golf cart there. And I'm like, it just hit me months ago. Like, why weren't we driving the camera through the fight? 
<laughs> I was just like, Yoka, it would have been a call. I'm like, why did like no one thought of it? I obviously I'm the it's on me, I'm the director, but I'm like, it was just random. I was working and I was just like, doo -doo, and it just downloaded my head and I start yelling out loud. <laughs> you don't realize, you know, so it's just you know, and, and the film fest run, I mean, you know me, because I run Fr Freedom Shorts and Liberty Massacre, which Chloe's been a part of a million times, but there's always ways you 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 find a you know you find out ways to make things even better. Yeah, and and you know when when you're first doing them, you're you're learning, and there'll always be mistakes that you make that you're like, damn, I shouldn't have done that. But like you know, that's that's how you learn, and you become a better filmmaker. So like, if we could do it all over again, and I didn't, and I knew everything, like I wouldn't learn, and I wouldn't become a better filmmaker. So I I think it's you know that's just that's just how you grow and you know and things happen also that you you can't help you know right, you, like, you know if camera equipment breaks or something and you're like oh we're gonna redo the scene different you know it's it just takes time and it's a learning curve and you know so like i i don't think it's you know you can't go back and judge your work too harshly because you'd just be dwelling on it for years well, without a doubt and 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 in our world you're not looking for passes but like star wars and the marvel universe and all that, they they have unlimited money can go back and reshoot like we have a we have a low a, a low ceiling and when you know what I mean you got to get it all in cuz it's not like oh yeah don't worry another 20 no problem you know you can't get another 20 no problem you know so yeah yeah. yeah, but uh, going into uh, so I mean, as far as the film, you know, the honeymoon phase here, like it went over well. You're, I mean, well, overall, you guys are both satisfied, right? With, like with with your film company. I'm sorry, the distribution company and the whole process, because I think you guys knocked out of the ballpark for your first film. You know? Yeah, no, I, I I think overall we were really happy with how it all went. You know, it's 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 hard and it's stressful to make a feature film but uh i think once you see it and you know you you can be proud of it and um i think overall it was a great experience and it, it was good enough for us both to do it again with two new movies so you know you just you, you keep getting better each time and that was a first feature and uh yeah I, i'm proud of it i think it's a it's, it's a good movie and yes there's mistakes in it and stuff but you know there's always going to be no matter what, it's never going to be perfect. So, but as long as it's enjoyable, I know some people aren't a fan and some people are, but again, that's, we could have made a Marvel movie and people are fun and people aren't, you know? Yeah. It, that's one thing I always tell people with film. They're just like, you know, what I'm thinking about doing this. What, 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 what any advice you could give? I just say like, there's a million things I could tell you, but one of the things, remember you're making music, you're making art, you're making any sort of movie. The second you step forward, you're going to get fans. And on the other end of that, you're going to get haters. And if you can't handle that, get out now. And if you have a person that has to hit reply in the indie world, you'll never make it in the A-list world. Ever, 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 ever. You, you just got to you gotta shake that off. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it's harsh. And you know, like you spend so long doing something and it's like your baby. And then like the second it gets released, the haters are like, Oh, this is stupid. And, and you just, you know, it just, that happens. And yeah, I mean, oh. I don't take it personally. Like I, I think that's just something you have to learn to do. Um, just as what it is. I, yeah. I'm always fine with someone says that straight up. Like, I don't like your movie. It's just not for me zero problems but i mean once in a while the only thing that ever rattles me is once in a while they'll tell me something about the movie i'm like that didn't happen in my movie <laughs> like what, what are you talking about and they're like well yeah you know it's like the funniest thing or like you know they're making up stuff that they thought they saw i'm like no i'm like i think you were probably watching it with a group of people and you got more into your conversation and kept looking back and you got lost but I'm not telling you have to like my movie, but you know, if you're going to come at me like that, at least you have your freaking details. Right. You know? Oh, but, so, yeah. So flipping over to fear crypt, uh, tell us like the origin of that. Cause I know we, we, we just slightly touched on it already, but. So, um, I started fear crypt when I, after I went back to England, after I was here for a year and then I wanted to make like a horror film. And when I was with my husband who, um, prefers like, uh, 
not like he doesn't mind horror films but he definitely doesn't like them and we were gonna get married and I was like oh well you know like horror is really important to me and I like want to make horror films and you know we just had two different ideas of what we wanted to do and I was like but he was like you know like he was 100% supportive he was like but that should never stop you he's like you want to make horror films he's like I'll teach you and I'll help you to make anything you want to make I just don't always want to direct you know and I was like that's really fair and that's really nice and I was like well I'll take that um and then I um we made a horror film together and then I started just going off after the honeymoon phase I had some experience I produced a feature and then I was like oh I want to make my own and I started making all these horror films and although although Phil said that you know like he, he helps me on everything you know like he is really and in, super involved um and uh, even though they're not his type of movies um but we keep making so I just kept making them I was like I just I, I like I love them and I found a great team of people um like Wesley Malott and Brittany Snayman I worked I with just saw time. one of his films where he had Lauren Levera in oh god it's stained or something so it's stalked stalked so yeah. freaking good dude I I went and I wrote I wrote him after like I never met the guy next day I, I added him and uh wrote like man what great great work I mean just a top-notch film man I loved it yeah he's he's super talented they're actually making a feature film of that right now Brittany's actually involved with that as well she's gonna produce um but they're just like such great people and we all like love doing the same things where we're like, we all want to make YouTube shorts for our channels. And so we just kept, we had a good thing going and we kept making movies and um, it was great. And and that's how Fear Crypt happened. And then I was like, and then people, um, I got like a few requests being like, hey, can I put my movie on your channel? And at first I was like, oh, well, I, you know, I was mainly doing it for my movies, but that would also be cool, you know, like, if I could make this like a little horror hub. And, I was, and so I started doing that. And then that kind of, um, the Friends of Fear Crypt series like kind of started to take off. And it was, it's just really cool. It was like all different horror filmmakers, um, you know, and having a channel for all that. Cause I love like Pony Smasher and Crypt TV and Alter and I follow all them and I watch all this stuff. And I was like, oh, and now I have my own little version. It was just really cool. Is that you alone, like fully, or are you with someone helping you with those YouTube the fear? It's just it's me and my husband own Fear Crypt, um, okay. and that's yeah. And I pretty much run the day to day of it, uh, and he helps me. But I like to do it, even though he's not like super into horror. I like Where are the rules? This so like any filmmaker that's looking to make a film that would be kind of limited to YouTube, like where. Obviously, no nudity. We get that part, but like, where do you know the window or the ceiling where the violence has to stop before it's like YouTube's like no. Yeah. Do, um, do you know where to? No, I'm just asking. Do you know the cutoff? Like, kind of with that. I don't, but like, I in my short films, I like never do extreme nudity. I just try to avoid it completely because they're so strict on it now, um, mm -hmm. and it also really affects monetization. Um, so, like, if you have any nudity or extreme gore, um, they will like suppress the monetization where they'll only show it to restricted, you know, things and like, cause then they can only put like certain advertisements in front of it. So you make less money. Um, so yeah, like the more you can avoid it, violence isn't as big of a deal as nudity or sex. Like you'll just get, you're just not for sure films. Features, yeah, that would work. Um, but yeah, but yeah. short films, I, I don't know the line, but I know that right before I upload, I have to do like a little questionnaire you don't have to, it's optional, but it speeds up um, the like the rating of it where you have to put like mild extreme gore, a little bit of gore and like what it refers to. Like, do you see the gore happening? Um, I was actually talking, I can't remember who I was talking to about this recently, but there is like how um, Hollywood movies are rated. Like in an R movie, um, in a PG-13 movie, I think it is, uh, or the lower rated movies, you can see the aftermath of gore. So you can see someone like lay there with like blood on their chest, but you can't see the knife go in. Because mm. if you see it happen, then it's an like. But if you don't see it happen, it's just the aftermath. Um, it's the same with like, if you showed like breasts or penis in a medical way and not like a sexual way, then you can get a lower rating. But if it's any any time 
the same with the um i don't know if i can swear but the f word on like if you use the f word like and it's not in terms of like a sexual meaning um you can get a lower rating but it can't be used like it can't be used in a sentence where like i was effing her you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like yeah so there's like all and plus they changed their policy all, like every couple of months. I just got another email. I didn't read it yet, but it said like on the January 5th, you know, here, here's the new term. So, I, you know, I, I got to go over that and see what, you know, what else we're restricted from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would you give uh, advice for anyone currently looking to get into film? Just go right into making a movie planet. And even if it's literally no budget, get find people who are at the same level as you. So if you are just starting out, if you're a film student, get together with all your other film students and make something. Um, the more you get in your own head about like how hard it is to do something or like, oh, I need money to do certain things. Like you'll be waiting forever. You know, like find people at the same level who wanna do stuff. With Fear Crypt, what I started doing, um, because that was my main problem is like, I just didn't have any money. I was like, oh, I've got all these ideas and I know the coolest of people. And I was like, but I just have no money. Like I can, I, I can't just like throw five grand into a film. I was like, I just can't. And um, I met Wesley and um, Brittany and people like that who all had YouTube channels like me and had the same things where they had a bunch of scripts and a bunch of things they wanted to do, but money's always the issue. And we all split it. So we were like, all right, well, if we all put in this amount of money, we can make the movie and we can all own it equally. So like we'll take in turns directing, we'll take in turns writing the movies. And it just became a thing that we kept doing. And it wasn't like super expensive then because we were all splitting the cost. Um, you know, so there's there's ways to get around everything, you know. Uh and you know if you if you have anxiety about making movies too like i have extreme anxiety about everything <laughs> like and sometimes if i get in my own head about making anything like i'll just i'll keep putting it off like oh i'm not ready yet but you know are you ever really ready you know for anything well, <laughs> just i mean anxiety is just really a, in the end like a human emotion and obviously in today, especially in today's world that could that could it's changed like it, it could it could it could consume you but like even when I was making my film, I had that, what if it rains? What if five people call out that day? But all, all I got to do is go in my head and be like, this isn't in your control. You you cast the right people. They're going to show up and they're going to do it. Shut up. You know, <laughs> and get and get back to, you know, being the director. And, you know, you know, I'm more about letting the cast down by not coming up with a good movie. You know, so that worry, you got to, you got to chill. So because otherwise, if you're prolonging, what you want to do you're letting it beat you you know so yeah. it's a smart yeah. thing but um man we blew through a lot of questions quick Kettle. but uh anything you want to go over with anything you need a plug or anything any topic uh i guess um if you are looking for a horror film to watch check out fair crypt um and uh watch alicia which is the short film version of the feature i'm about to make uh if you're interested in what's coming up next. Um, also, uh, the two companies I work with all the time, Thinking Art Entertainment and End Eternal Productions, super awesome movies on their channels. Um, and they're super awesome people who are, we're all just starting out. So we appreciate any uh, checkouts of our work. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's me right now. <laughs> so let's make it a, a three pack. So Thinking Art, Thinking Arts was 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 one of them. Yeah, Thinking the Arts Entertainment, which is run by Wesley Malott, and End Eternal Productions, which is run by Brittany Snayman. Um, and, super and, awesome people. And Fear Crypt and Average Superstar TV. Go right to yeah. YouTube and subscribe to all four of them. You can also subscribe to uh, Average Superstar TV on Instagram and Facebook. And we are, where we also will be releasing. An interview like this every Monday morning at 5.30. You can see them on everything. Spotify, iTunes, right here on YouTube. All outlets. Downloads available. And uh, anything else you need to plug, Chloe? Uh, I think that's enough for everyone. They've got <laughs> four channels to go check out right now. <laughs> all are welcome. So, well, 
Well, I thank this audience for tuning in and taking the time to listen to another episode of Average Superstar TV. Chloe, I thank you for being a guest and uh, hope to be in one of your movies soon. You're on fire. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't wait to work with you again. Thank you so much to everyone who uh, came in to listen. And thanks for having me on the show, Lauren. All right, kids. Until the next. Enjoy.